beginning of this unit, um, we started talking about triangles and how to classify triangles. And one of the ways that we classify triangles is by their sides. A scalene triangle has no sides the same. An isosceles triangle has two sides the same. And equilateral triangles have three sides the same. So today we're going to focus on the qualities that happen because the two sides are the same of the isosceles triangle and what kind of and the kind of problems that it creates. So if a, triangle DOG is an isosceles triangle, um, so that we can have the same terminology, the legs are the sides that are congruent to each other. So DO and DG are considered the legs, DO or OD, it doesn't matter um, which way they're named. OD and DG, those are the legs, and the base of that triangle is OG. Now, it is not because it's sitting on its base. If I took the triangle and flipped it upside down and called this one CAT, CA would be the base. So the base is not the congruent side. The legs are the congruent sides, and the base is the third side. So it's not that it's sitting on it necessarily, it's um, where it is in relationship to the rest of the, um, the angles and the sides. The base angles are the angles that are on the base. So in this particular case, angle O and angle G are the base angles. And the vertex angle is angle D. Okay, the vertex angle is between the two congruent sides. Again, it's not because it's at the top, so this would be the vertex angle in um, this case because it is between the two congruent sides. And then the base angles are these two angles right here. Or in this triangle CAT, those would be the base angles. So they are the angles formed by the base and the congruent sides. So the base angles theorem for, a congruent, or for an isosceles triangle says that if two sides of the triangle are congruent, which means it's isosceles, then the angles opposite those sides are also congruent. We kind of ran into that the other day when we were doing angle side relationships. The small angle is across from the short side and the medium angle, the medium side, the large angle, the large side. And we saw a couple of examples where if the angles were the same, then the sides across from them were the same. So it makes sense. So what we have then is if you go back up to DOG, that if the sides are congruent, so if DO is congruent to DG, then that means that angle O is congruent to angle G, in this case above. Or we could also say that angle C is congruent to angle A in that second triangle CAT. So how we use that then, and don't forget, we also know that triangles add to 180 uh, linear pairs are supplementary, so they add to 180. Vertical angles are congruent. We have to go back um, and pull up all those things that we already know from before. So if you look at this example, if these two sides are congruent, which they are marked that they are, that means that the sides that are opposite them are congruent. That means that this angle is 35. Well, then that allows me to find angle X because those two triangles are the same, they add up to 70 degrees, and 180 minus 70 means that angle X is 110. So we have angle X is 110. So now we need to move into this bottom triangle. There's nothing from the top triangle that leads me into the bottom triangle. Primarily, you would look for parallel lines. But I know that these two are the same which means then that these two angles have to be the same as each other. So I take 180 and I subtract 96. You get 84. Now, those two angles are going to be divided equally, and so I divide that by two, and I find out that each of those angles is 42 degrees. So angle Y, or Y would be 42 degrees. Now in problem number two, notice these parallel lines. So we've got to reach back into our previous units and use things like alternate interior angles. Don't forget those. So you kind of have to look at this and, and figure out where you want to start, your best place to start. And so I would start here with this triangle, this isosceles triangle. If those two sides are the same, it means that these two angles are the same. And since I've used 100, uh, I have 180 degrees to use, I've used 110, 
that means that I have 70 degrees left. 70 degrees divided by 2 means that angle X is 35 and angle Z is 35. So we know X and we know Z. Okay, from there, now we need to move into these other triangles. And always, if you're given something in geometry, you're going to need it. So the fact that these lines are marked parallel right here, the fact that those are marked, that those are parallel, is important. And what that's going to give me is that here's this Z, these alternate interior angles. We're going to use those more than any other angles, which means that angle W is also 35 degrees. So now I know that that's 35. Now I can find angle Y. I can add 50 and 35, subtract that from 180, and I get that angle, uh, angle uh, Y is 95 degrees. Okay, so you just kind of have to work your way. It's like a puzzle. You have to work your way around and find all the pieces. Okay. So now let's look at some that have to do with variables. So we learned that when two sides are the same, the angles that are opposite them are congruent. So I look at this triangle, the first thing I notice is that those two sides are the same. That means that these two angles are the same. So those two angles should be the same size. One angle is 68, the other one should be 68, but it's 4x, and so the question is then what does x have to be so that that angle can be 68 degrees? So 4x is equal to 68. Divide both sides by 4. You get that 68 divided by 4 is 17. So x would have to be 17 so that both of those angles could be 68 degrees. Now I can mark them with those little tick marks or I can give them to you as an um, equal side links. I can see those two sides are equal to each other. They are the equal measure. They're congruent to each other, which means then that these angles have to be the same measurement also. So I want to figure out what does U have to be so that can happen. So you set it up. 4u minus 7 equals 2u plus 15. Now we've been doing this all along. We did it way back in unit 1 when we had midpoints and we were setting the two pieces part equals part. So we know that that angle equals the other angle. So we set them equal to each other and then we solve them. So you have to decide, are they equal to each other? If yes, then set them equal to each other, then solve. So I'm gonna subtract two U from both sides. Two U minus seven is equal to 15. I'm gonna add seven to both sides because I need it to go away from the left-hand side. So 2u is equal to 22. Divide by 2 and divide by 2, and I get that u is 11. Okay, so when two sides are the same, the two angles are the same. And then we have the converse of that. If two angles of the triangle are congruent, so we first we said if the two sides are congruent, then the two base angles are congruent. Now we're saying if the base angles are congruent, then the sides opposite them are also congruent. The two congruent angles are the base angles. And that only works when, when you have your two base angles. So in this case, we're given that angle D is congruent to angle F. That's the part we know. Therefore, if D is congruent to F, so this is saying if angle D is congruent to angle F, then what we know is that DE is congruent to EF. That's what that statement is saying. So what this would look like in a problem is if these two angles are marked congruent, then those two sides must be equal to each other. So I set those two sides, whatever they say, I set them equal to each other. Now I solve it so that I can figure out what X has to be so that that will be true. So add three to both sides, two X is equal to 12, divide both sides by two and I find out that X is six. Same thing for number six. Those two base angles are the same, which means that these two sides are the same. So 9x minus 24 is equal to 4x plus 36. Solve this equation. The geometry is done. Now you have to do the algebra. Subtract 4x from both sides. Four x minus, or 5x minus 24 is equal to 36. So 36 plus 24 is 60. So 5x is equal to 60. 
160 divided by 5 is 12. So x has to be 12 in order for that to be true. So when you have an isosceles triangle, when your base angles are congruent, um, when your two sides, excuse me, when your legs are congruent and the legs of the triangle are congruent, the base angles are the same. And then the converse of that, when the base angles are the same, then the legs or the sides that are opposite them are congruent. And we can use that to solve problems.